If reconditioning is required for the differential, the planetaries, or the axle assembly, a number of shim pack thicknesses must be determined. On the differential, there are two shimming operations. One determines the thickness of the shim pack between the pinion cage and the differential housing. The other determines the thickness and the distribution of the shims behind the two bearing carriers on the left and right side of the differential housing. Shimming is required for each of the gears in the planet carrier to establish proper bearing preload. The shim pack size must also be determined to fit between the planet carrier and the axle shaft in order to establish proper axle bearing preload. The photo on the left shows the pinion cage assembly in place without any shims installed between the pinion cage and the differential housing. Mounting bolts have been tightened to standard torque 80 foot-pounds, 108 newton meters. The differential drive assembly and bearing carriers are absent from the differential housing. A special gauge bar measuring tool, PLT-700-2, has been installed in the differential bearing carrier bores. An inside micrometer or telescoping gauge can be used to measure the distance from the face of the pinion drive gear to the top of the gauge bar as shown in the photo on the left. The total distance to be determined is from the face of the pinion drive gear to the center line of rotation of the ring gear. The center of rotation for the ring gear coincides with the center of the bore for the bearing carriers. Since the diameter of the bore is exactly five inches, half of this distance 2.5 inches, 63.5 millimeters, must be added to the distance measured in the photo on the left to obtain the total distance from the face of the pinion gear to the center line of rotation of the ring gear. The photo on the right shows the shim pack being installed between the pinion cage assembly and the differential housing. The size of the shim pack is determined by subtracting the total of the measured distance and the additional 2.5 inches, 63.5 millimeters, from the measurement etched on the face of the pinion drive gear. After installing the shim pack, tighten the mounting bolts to standard torque and measure the distance from the face of the pinion drive gear to the gauge bar. This final measurement, plus 2.5 inches, 63.5 millimeters, must equal the measurement etched on the face of the pinion drive gear plus or minus two thousandths of an inch, five hundredths of a millimeter. After the pinion cage has been installed, place the differential drive assembly inside the housing and support it by installing the bearing carriers on either side of the housing. The carrier with the larger bearing goes on the side closest to the ring gear. The bearing carriers are installed at this time without shims or O-rings. As shown in the photo on the left, the bolts on the bearing carrier on the side farthest from the ring gear must be tightened first to the standard torque of 80 foot-pounds, 108 newton meters. Then as shown in the photo on the right, tighten the bolts on the carrier closest to the ring gear to 76 inch pounds, 8.6 newton meters. Rotate the differential drive assembly while tightening to properly seat the components. After torquing the bolts on the carrier closest to the ring gear to 76 inch pounds, as indicated in the previous frame, these same bolts should be backed off to zero torque. Then as shown in the photo, the free rolling torque of the differential drive assembly should be checked and recorded. A spring scale is used for the operation. Note, it is important that the tightening order mentioned in the previous frame be strictly followed. If the bolts on the bearing carrier closest to the ring gear were tightened to standard torque without shims in place, the ring gear would bind against the pinion gear. This would make it impossible to check free rolling torque. Retorque the bolts on the carrier closest to the ring gear in gradual increments until a torque of 26 inch pounds 2.9 newton meters is reached. The differential should be rotated during the torquing procedure
to guarantee proper seating of the component parts. Then using a feeler gauge as shown in the photo on the left, measure the distance remaining between the back side of the carrier and the differential housing. A measurement should be made at both of the slots visible in the photo. The proper thickness of the total shim pack is the average measured gap plus or minus two thousandths of an inch, five hundredths of a millimeter. After determining the proper size shim pack, remove both bearing carriers. Divide the total measured shim pack between the left hand and the right hand carrier so that slightly less than half the shim pack is on the side farthest from the ring gear. Then as shown in the photo on the right, place the larger half of the shim pack on the carrier closest to the ring gear and install it with the O-ring in place. Gradually tighten the bearing carrier mounting bolts on both sides to the standard torque of 80 foot-pounds, 108 newton meters, while rotating the differential to seat the components. After the bearing carriers are properly torqued, a check of the backlash between the ring gear and the pinion drive gear must be performed. Hold the pinion drive gear in place by anchoring the input yoke as shown in the photo. Then, using the dial indicator, measure the backlash of the ring gear. Measurements should be taken at four positions to determine the smallest backlash. The specified backlash is six to twelve thousandths of an inch. 15 to 30 hundredths millimeters. If the measured backlash is tighter than specified, shims should be taken from the bearing carrier on the side farthest from the ring gear and added under the carrier closest to the ring gear. This will not change the total shim pack for the bearing carriers, nor will it change the bearing preload, but it will change the lateral position of the ring gear by moving it farther away from the pinion drive gear. If the measured backlash is greater than specified, shims should be removed from the side closest to the ring gear and added to the side farthest from the ring gear. After the reassembly of the differential is completed, recheck the free rolling torque of the differential assembly once again. It should be 12 to 26 inch pounds, 1.3 to 3.96 newton meters greater than the free rolling torque measured earlier in the reassembly process. If the final measure of free rolling torque does not fall within the specified limits, the shimming procedure must be repeated step by step as described above. The tooth contact pattern should also be checked and additional adjustments made if necessary. In order to remove a planet gear from the carrier, Drive the roll pin into the planet gear shaft as shown in the photo on the left. After the roll pin is driven into the shaft, the shaft can be pressed or driven out of the carrier. Then remove the planet gear with its two roller bearing cone assemblies. The photo on the right shows the roll pin being driven out of the planet gear shaft. The same roll pin can be used for reassembly. It is driven in from the outside of the carrier after the shaft is pressed back into place. A punch can be used to reposition the roll pin as shown in the photo on the left. However, the pin should be flush with the carrier face or no more than halfway into the shaft on reassembly. Inspect the gear for wear or pitting. Replace it if necessary. Inspect the two bearing cones. If they show wear, they must be replaced as a matched set. One method of measuring the width of the planet gear bearing cones is illustrated in the two photos. The photo on the left shows a washer approximately two inches in diameter with a flat cut on one side. Assemble the bearing cones in the gear and position one washer over each of the cones. A three inch bolt can be used to draw the assembly together. Hold the head of the bolt in a vise and tighten the nut to 10 inch pounds while rotating the gear to align the bearing cones. Be sure the washers are positioned squarely over the bearing cones and that the two flats are in the same position so that a measurement can be taken. Using a micrometer, as shown in the photo on the right, 
measure the outer width of the assembled bearing cones. Only three shim sizes are available for Planet Gear preload. If the micrometer reading obtained is between 2.113 and 2.117 inches, the 56 thousandths of an inch shim is used. If the micrometer reads 2.118 to 2.122 inches, the 49 thousandths of an inch shim must be used. If the reading obtained is 2.123 to 2.127 inches, the 42 thousandths of an inch shim must be used. This measuring procedure must be followed for each of the planet gears. If the outside width of the bearing cones is less than 2.113 inches or more than 2.127 inches, the bearing cones are out of specifications and must be replaced. The photo shows the third and final gear being replaced in the carrier. Be sure to insert the retainer spacer in the carrier after the first gear has been installed. It cannot be fitted in after two gears are in place. We will pause now for a short review on some of the procedures involved in rebuilding the differential assembly. Stop the tape while you are answering the questions. The answer for number one is adding. The total distance measured is from the face of the pinion gear to the center of the rotation of the ring gear. Adding the 2.5 inches accounts for the distance from the center to the outside of the 5 inch bore in the housing. The answer for number two is closest to. Without shims, the bearing carrier goes deeper into the housing and moves the ring gear laterally, closer to the pinion gear. The answer for number three is also closest to. Removing shims from the side closest to the ring gear allows the bearing carrier to go deeper and close the gap between the ring and the pinion gear. The answer to number four is C. When rebuilding the planet carrier gear assemblies, each gear assembly should be measured and shimmed separately. When rebuilding the axle assembly, a number of special measurements are required. The photo on the left shows the axle housing being lowered over the axle shaft. The oil seal and the outer bearing are already in place at the hub end of the shaft. After slipping the inner bearing cone down on the axle shaft, install the assembled planet carrier on the inboard end of the shaft, as shown in the photo on the right. When the carrier is in place on the splines, Slip the 5 eighths of an inch bolt through the carrier retainer spacer and thread it onto the end of the shaft. Hold the axle hub stationary and tighten the retainer bolt to press the inner bearing cone into place on the axle shaft. Continue to tighten the retainer bolt until the end play of the axle is 1 to 10 thousandths of an inch, 25 to 250 thousandths of a millimeter. As shown in the photo on the left, the end play is measured by placing a dial indicator on the planet carrier and observing the vertical movement between this surface and the mounting surface of the axle housing. In order to check end play, raise the housing off the floor and use pry bars, as shown in the photo, to lift the planet carrier and axle shaft. When the proper end play is established, measure and record the free rolling torque of the axle. This is accomplished with the aid of an inch-pound torque wrench, as shown in the photo on the right. The axle assembly must be raised off the ground with the hub free to move when taking this measurement. Then hold the hub stationary once again and tighten the retaining bolt to continue pressing the bearing on the shaft until the free rolling torque reaches 26 to 34 inch-pounds, 2.9 to 3.9 newton meters, more than the free rolling torque observed when the one to ten thousandths of an inch end play was established. After the proper free rolling torque is established, remove the retainer bolt and lift the planet carrier from the shaft. Measure the distance from the top of the shaft to the face of the bearing as shown in the photo on the left. A vernier caliper is being used to measure the distance. A depth micrometer can also be used. With the retainer spacer held firmly in place, as shown in the photo on the right, measure the depth of the splined hub of the planet carrier. 
The difference between this distance and the length measured along the shaft is the space that must be filled by the shim pack. Select the shims so that the thickness of the shim pack is equal to the difference between the two measurements plus one to five thousandths of an inch. 25 to 125 thousandths of a millimeter. Insert the measured shim pack between the planet carrier and the end of the axle shaft. After the planetary carrier is in place, tighten the retainer bolt to a standard torque, 160 foot-pounds, 215 newton meters. With the proper thickness shim pack installed, the retainer bolt can be torqued to standard torque without changing the axle bearing preload or free rolling torque previously observed. The free rolling torque should be checked before reinstalling the axle. If it has changed significantly from the last reading, repeat the shimming procedure. Before placing the reconditioned axle assembly on the differential housing, a number of items need careful attention. If both axle assemblies have been serviced, make sure that the two planetary drive shafts are put back on their proper side. The shorter of the two shafts goes on the ring gear side of the differential assembly. When installing the friction disc, make sure that it stays on the inner set of splines and does not fall into the slot on the planetary drive shaft. Apply sealer to the two mating surfaces on the housings before reassembly. Follow the instructions given in the service manual. With the rear frame suspended, the assembled axle can be raised into place with a floor jack or by use of a sling and a lifting device on either end of the axle. The photo on the left shows the axle already positioned to the front cradle member. The yoke on the end of the pinion drive shaft at the front of the differential should be removed to get more clearance when installing the axle. Keep the axle supported by the lifting device and move it as far forward as possible in the front cradle member. Raise the rear cradle member, bolster, high enough to slip over the trunnion on the rear of the differential housing. Fasten the bolster to the frame by tightening the mounting bolts to standard torque. Then move the axle assembly to the rear and install the thrust plate as shown in the photo on the right. Both photos are from above the axle. The engine has been removed for the photo. Before installing the trunnion thrust cap, a number of measurements are required to determine the thickness of a shim pack to fit between the thrust cap and the machined surface on the rear side of the bolster. The photo on the left shows a depth micrometer being used to measure the distance from the back of the thrust plate to the machined surface on the rear of the bolster. Before taking this measure, Move the axle assembly as far forward as it can go in the bolster, with the thrust plate attached as shown in the illustration on the right. The axle assembly can be moved forward by using a pry bar between the rear bolster and the differential housing. The assembly will stop moving forward when one part of the thrust plate actually touches the machined surface of the bolster. When the axle assembly is fully forward, Make several readings to determine the greatest distance between the back of the thrust plate and the machined surface of the bolster. The photo on the left shows a depth micrometer being used to measure the inset of the trunnion thrust cap. Make several readings to determine the smallest distance between the mounting surface of the cap and the first machined step on the inside of the cap. As seen in the illustration on the right, the shim pack is inserted between the mounting surface of the thrust cap and the machined surface on the rear of the bolster. To determine the size of the shim pack, subtract the smallest measured inside clearance in the thrust cap from the greatest measured distance that the thrust plate extends out from the machine surface. Add ten thousandths of an inch to this number to obtain the proper shim pack thickness. The purpose of the shim pack is to allow the thrust plate freedom of movement to oscillate inside the thrust cap as shown in the illustration on the right. The proper size shim pack will allow this freedom of movement, but at the same time it will limit end play on the axle assembly 
to ten thousandths of an inch. After the axle assembly is in place, install the yoke on the differential pinion shaft. Then reinstall the drive coupling and universal joints between the differential and the transmission output shaft. Finally, fill the axle with four gallons of Hytran. This completes the program on axle and brake orientation for the 510 and 515 payloaders.